How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to some more Majora's Mask 3D today. And today is an interesting video. Um, there's going to be a lot of Bomber's Notebook activities that I complete this video. I did cut it up quite a bit. It was originally around an hour and 20 minutes. Um, there was a lot of unnecessary stuff that I can just kind of explain. Um, but with all that little introduction out of the way, the first thing that I do in this video is head over to this little, um, I don't know, I guess cavern area. And there's actually a heart piece that we can get over here. I believe that I get three heart pieces in this video, I think. And then the final four in the last video. Um, this area that I'm heading into isn't really too difficult. Um, you just kind of kind of learn from your previous battles. Um, the only enemies here are ones we faced before. Um, there's no puzzles or anything besides this little door. I think that's just to prevent you from entering if you don't have the light arrows. Make sure you uh, complete Akiana, your Stone Tower Temple. Um, we'll see this guy. I think this is the last time that we see him. Um, I don't know what exactly he's supposed to be, but... Because I think in Akuna of Time, he's supposed to be the soldier or something. That was in the uh, little, uh, pot room. Not the drug pot, but, like, actual pots. And, I don't know what his purpose is. Like, if he's someone who transcends time, or what his deal is. But, with that being said, um, this first little room over here, I believe these are called... Dinalfos? Dinalfos? Um, I think they take one hit from the Great Fairy Sword. You don't need to do the jump attacks. As you can see there, he just died with one hit. And that guy as well. And each room gives you 100 rupees, which is nice. Because we still do need to work towards the uh, bank harpies. Although, now that we have the late arrows, I do show later on in the video, there is another way that you can get money a bit faster. Um, if you want to work on that right now. Um, what I do is, I go outside of Snowhead, and make sure it's nighttime, and then there's the little... I forget what they're called. Um, they're little snow creatures, and all you want to do is just shoot a light arrow at them, and they'll drop 50 rupees. And I believe you can probably fill up pretty darn close to the 500 right away. And that's kind of the strategy. You just hit the bushes for magic and arrows, and just go back and forth from the bank, and then hitting the uh, snow dudes again, and you'll get there pretty fast. Um, this is the final time we'll encounter the wizard robe. He's not difficult at all. He has no new attacks. He just teleports around the room. I imagine two jump strikes from the Gilded Sword, or the Great Fairy Sword, would have killed him. I just chose to use light arrows, because why not? And once again, we'll be getting a heart, or excuse me, a treasure, treasure, treasure chest, I cannot speak. A treasure chest for 100 rupees. So, this is all real nice with uh, filling your bank up completely. And then we have two more rooms to go. I really like this area. I mean, it is small, but you get to reface some of your enemies, um... Maybe nothing really too fancy. You get, do get to face the Garrow Master one more time. Um, but, I don't know, it's just... It's a cool little area. And we gotta fight this eyeball again. And if you're playing on a 3DS version, what I would recommend here for this boss fight, since it's kinda hard to pull off with a PS4 controller, but I would just keep doing quick spins around the eyeball with the Great Fairy Sword. And he'll go down pretty fast. As you can see here, just normal slashes from the Great Fairy Sword actually hit a lot of eyeballs, but what I'm trying to do is do the Great Spin Attack, Quick Spin, which I'm not always successful with, but it does seem to go through the fight a bit faster than how I originally handled it, so just something to think about. I think the Spin Attack might damage the eyeball as well, the main eye, but I'm not 100% certain. And then, you might be able to land a slash on the eye when it's moving like that. It does seem a little bit difficult aside from there. I didn't manage to hit it again. Because I believe there's some sort of armor around it when it's closed. So 
best thing I found to do here was just using the arrows, which I'm not exactly accurate with because I didn't get the lock on it. Until there. One arrow took it down. And then once again, another chest with 100 rupees. It's a little interesting that they only chose to do four rooms instead of filling up your wallet completely. Imagine they could have um, put in Gomas or um, uh, maybe one of the gecko frogs again. I guess that wouldn't really make too too much sense with the uh, whole um, frog choir thing, but I don't know. It doesn't have to be a good frog. It can be like an evil frog. And all this is only for a single heart piece. It does seem like it kind of would have been fitting for a heart container. I think they did something like this in Spirit Tracks, in which you fought a bunch of enemies and then it would give you a heart container. I could be wrong, but I think it's something in Hyrule Castle Town, if I'm not mistaken. It is a little bit tricky to fight this guy without a shield. That's why I took the shield out, and it's either this fight or in the next video that he's the victory that he supported. Jump slash, which looks like I tried here, but I just wanted to get the attack in right there. I don't think he has any new moves. I'm just not the best at fighting this guy. And he somehow doesn't see me when I'm right in front of him, which is interesting, but... I suppose the mask probably blurs his vision a little bit. But now that that's over, I'll get our final 100 rupee chest, and then the heartbeat chest will appear on the center room. So there's the 100 rupees. So I guess this whole little area was just meant to be some sort of test for Link. Final test, that is. Although, I don't know if he, um... Like, he conjured up these guys or not? I wonder what the story is there. And then, I believe there's only two more heart pieces left to get, if you're watching along with me, or playing along with me. And the final two aren't difficult to get, like, at all. Um, one just requires a mask, and then the other is just the bank heart piece. And it's interesting his picture, how it appeared there. I don't know if that's just an issue with Citra, or if there's something else going on there. Because I thought it actually showed like a picture of the Pole Collector, not just the whole like black shadow, but I don't know. So pretty close to 3,000 now. Um, I do cut out quite a few parts that involve me um, just picking up rupees. Because I didn't think that would be the most exciting thing in the world to watch. Just me collecting tons of rupees. I do show it at the end, I believe. A little bit of me um, killing those snow guys. But aside from that, I don't think I really um, show too much rupee collection. Um, another thing that you'll want to do is to talk to all those bombers throughout the town. I think the only one you don't need to talk to is the one wearing red. But if you talk to the other ones, they'll give you rumored events. And these rumored events, I believe, are required for 100% completion, which is why I do them. I don't think there's anything fishing related, but there is a few events that I will cover in this video. Um, I'm trying to think of what I could note that you could maybe get through in the first cycle. Um, I want to say I go through a few cycles in this video. I do cut out a lot of parts. Um, you could do the Goron hotel room in the first day if you'd like. Um, well, that's the only time you can do it, actually. What you want to do for that is... Wear the Guan mask, and then... Oh, another weird thing I discovered about here. For some reason, when you're crouched, you can use the Great Fairy Sword. I don't know why that is. I just found that a little strange. But as I was saying, um, to get the Guan Room event, um, what you want to do is on the first day, come into the Stockpot Inn at around 2 p.m., I believe, and then talk to Anju. Make sure you haven't talked to her at all in the like previous hours. And then she'll give you a key to the hotel room, which is upstairs. And what that'll do is complete the event, and there's going to be a chest in there for 100 rupees. So make sure you mail the slider, because we are actually going to be completing the Cafe and Angie quest. And it's all stuff that I've done in previous videos, aside from the final part. Um, final part? It's... It's actually probably a really unique part 
for Zelda games. Um, you'll see why. But I don't want to say too much. It's, it's just unique for a Zelda game. <clears throat> I think here is one of the parts where I was going out and collecting the rupees from the enemies. Um, I don't know if I made a cut here or not. I can't tell at the moment. This might be coming up. But if not, um, you can kind of get the general idea on what to do. Um, fire light arrows at these, uh, what are these called? Bubbles? I forget, but... They're easy to kill, um, but the main strategy, I would say, is outside of the snowhead place, there's those snow dudes. I want to say they're like Enos or something? Maybe not, but just kill those suckers over and over, and their work's going to give you a lot of big money. And if it is daytime, you can kill the, um, dime, what are those called? Just the dongos? I think they're just called the dongos, and since we have the great fairy sword, you can just do a jump attack on the tail, I want to say, twice. Or maybe it's one jump attack and one normal slice that will kill them. Either way, they're no big deal to kill. And they also drop 50 rupees, but obviously the nighttime route is faster, well, assuming you don't run out of magic. And here I cut ahead to the um, little cafe part, which you want it to be 3 p.m., and then the mailman will come and ring the bell, and cafe the letter, and you can come up here, and then just wait for cafe to come back. I wonder if this was cafe's house originally. Like, while he was with Andrew, before he was turned into the child. I don't know, it's an interesting little hideout. I can't really imagine what it would have been used for. It's such an odd location. It's just... Some of these areas in Zelda games, you gotta wonder what they were originally used for. Like, clearly just they're used for gameplay purposes. But, like, in-universe, what would the reason be? Like, what is this little area even for? So, in one of the lines there, I believe he said punks, and I don't know who else he'd be referring to besides Sacken, because, unless the curiosity shop guy was in on it, but I don't think that's the case, so I wonder who the other people that attacked him were. Or maybe he didn't say punks, but I thought he said punks, so I don't know who he was referring to. But with that being said... Now that we have the pendant, we can give that to Anju. And make sure you do give it to Anju. Otherwise, you're going to have to redo this entire cycle. Which ain't going to be fun. And I almost head into the milk bar there, which went to been good. But we just want to give this to Anju. And she is just going to be like, oh, I've made my promise. I'll, I'll stay here. So now, what we can do is fly over to Icana Valley. And then, make sure it's day three. Um, I think 6 p.m. is when it has to be. Oh, don't fly the Stone Tower Temple like I did. And, there's an exciting little mini game, like I was saying earlier. Not something you really see in Zelda games too often. Well, the uniqueness of what this is, I should say. You do see mini games a lot in Zelda games. And then we're gonna rush on over to the side. We don't need to talk to Sacken, but we wanna run over here. And then you'll notice that behind this log over here is actually Cafe. On day three? I thought he was here on day two, but I guess not. Because he's clearly in the little laundry pool area. So that makes sense. <laughs> I 
Now, I don't know if you need to talk to him or not. Um, I would do it just to be safe. But otherwise, we can time travel to 6 p.m. after the dialogue's over. And this is where the interesting part happens. Wait a couple seconds, and then seconds gonna run up. I don't think you actually need to be crouched down. I just did it for a little stealth purpose. And then cafe is just gonna stare blankly in space, which is all right. So you really know a dude's rich when he hides a secret cave in a mountain. Like, he must have a ton of rupees to be able to afford this. And he actually disappears inside. Um, I don't know where exactly he went, because there's not really any exits besides the trap door, which I suppose he could have went through, but I don't know. It's very mysterious. He just seems to have disappeared. So this is the unique part. You actually get to play as Cafe, and it's not really too often in Zelda games that you get to play as another character. I know you get to play as um, other characters in Wind Waker, and I guess in Zelda and Spirit Tracks, but it's not overly common. So, I don't know, I find this a pretty cool idea. I wonder why they only used it once in this game, though. I mean, it's cool that you get to play as him. I think he's using the exact same what would it be, like, frames link, or model? Whatever thing is. Maybe structure? Because you can't roll like Link, and I believe all the animations are pretty close to the same. I don't know why he has a punch attack, though. Because there's no enemies for him. So it makes you wonder if there's another use originally for Cafe, like he was going to have to fight some guys. Maybe even sack him. I don't know. But the yellow switches are going to slow down the conveyor belt. Red switches will make it go faster, so avoid the red switches. I don't think there's any that you actually have to step on. And for the wolfos, just wait for them to attack and then hit their tail and they'll die. The switch and then there. So now what we can do is warp back to Clock Town, and I think you can set the clock to probably around 5 a.m. I think I'd play it safe and put it around 3 or 4, though. 
which turned out to be an hour earlier than necessary. Um, maybe even two hours earlier. I'm not sure. Certain. Um, I don't think you can time travel inside the clock pot in, which is... Well, I kind of gave myself a bit more time, but I wasn't really certain as to when Cafe for sure shows up. But for some reason, this guy is an evacuated town, but he did give me a rumor. And then this rumor is just about the arguing, which we'll actually be able to complete after um, you show him the mask that you get for the Cafe and Angie quest, which will complete the rumored event. So I believe you can actually, you can set it to four, um, maybe even five, I wouldn't risk five, but maybe you can set it to five, I'm not certain. I would imagine you can, because the door's just right here. And then all we have to do is wait until the clock says, I'm at 30, I believe. So we'll just kind of hang out here for a little bit. So after that's all done and said, or, or said and done, if you want to say it, um, we're the couple's mask in the mayor's office, and this is actually going to be one of our final pieces of heart that we're going to get, aside from the bank one, and the four that are in the moon. Um, I do like that this mask provides a lot of dialogue for this one little area. Um, I know you can get reactions from people from wearing certain masks, but this area... Um, your mask actually fixes the situation, which is kind of unique. Um, one of the things you can do, I'll mention right now, um, pay for the lottery on the first day, and then check again at 6 p.m., because we're going to need all the lottery numbers if we want to complete the notebook. But this next little quest is going to be for the seventh bottle, which is only available in the 3DS version. So if you're playing in the Nintendo 64 version, you won't be able to get this. Or maybe you could by duplicating glitches, but we're not doing that. But what we want to do is talk to, um... Oh gosh, what is this guy's name? I don't know. Another thing, I believe that if you wear this when you're delivering the milk with Creamia, or whatever her name is, um, I don't think the, uh, brothers will attack you. 
So if you're struggling with that, um, you can just wear this mask. And then, to get this milk, it's gotta be afternoon. Um, I don't think you can warp. Um, you might be able to use a pony to get back. But for safety reasons, I'd just use the bunny hood and run back. Um, you have plenty of time to do so. So that's all this really is. Just running back to Clock Town and then getting the bottle. I do wonder why they were so fascinated with giving like so many bottles in this game. They don't really have too many uses. I mean, yes, you can fill so many things. You can put so many things in the bottles, but for what? You don't need anything with how overpowered you become. Like, I don't know. I just... Maybe they wanted to fill the item menu up? I, I don't get it. I don't know that I show myself getting any of the lottery numbers, so just make sure on day one, pay the 10 rupees, get the lottery numbers at 6 p.m., um, rinse and repeat for day two and three, then reset the cycle, and then put in all the lottery numbers, um, you can tell what the lottery numbers are because they'll be in your notebook after you find out at the uh, 6 p.m. times what all the numbers were. Assuming that you paid for the lottery ticket um, in the morning. So that gives us our 7th bottle, and aside from bomb chews, that is every item in the game. And now the rest of this video just consists of the rumored events. Um, for this event, there's going to be two torches on either side. Um, I don't think I noticed the first two on the left side at first. Um, you can go up there to shoot the tor torches, but you can also shoot them from down here. Which I didn't even know how to get up there at first, so that's why I shot them from down here. So there's a torch there, and I didn't see that one off to the side. It is there. So make sure you shoot both of them. And there's two over here as well, so... Shoot that one. Whoops. There we go. For some reason that didn't count. Hmm. You know sometimes the arrows, the... Um, Fire arrows seem a bit more lenient, and other times not so much. But once you shoot all these, it'll light all the torches down here. I don't know how that works exactly, but it somehow does. And then our reward is a big whopping five rupees. And then there's one more thing to do yet in Zoro's Domain. I don't know if I showed that. Well, I guess there's two more things. Um, this bottle thing, you just kind of keep, gotta keep backing up. Um, if you don't want to pay rupees to replace the pots, just make sure you don't have any rupees or have less than 10 rupees. But it's not that big of a deal. Um, and the final thing is, play the new wave. Um, Besa, Bosa, Basa, Banana, I don't know. Um, and then take a picture of Lulu. It's gotta be after you play the song. And then, I believe you have to stay as Zora Link to, uh, give the picture and then get the money for it. So you head on up this ramp. Up to the second floor. And then you gotta be Zora Link. And then we get a whopping 20 rupees. Nice. And you can actually keep bringing in pictures of Lulu, and I think he just keeps on giving you 20 rupees, so... Not exactly the fastest way to get rupees, but it is another option. And right here is where I show the final heart piece, besides the moon pieces. And you can't take more than 5,000, which is understandable. Um, at this point, we don't really have too many uses for rupees. 
I don't think I show myself buying the bomb cheese, but this is the part where I show getting the room key to complete the, um, what is the event called? Something in the inn, I think. I saved the stock pot in, so that's how that event is completed. And there's a chest for 100 rupees up in the room. And you don't really need to buy bomb cheese because you'll be getting bomb cheese in the moon, so. I don't know if they're required for 100% completion in this game or not. Well, I guess they are, because you need them for the moon. Unless you're doing a glitch run, then they won't be, I guess. If there's any way to do that. I don't know. But here, I believe, is just where I show the lottery how it works. So, as you can see, I got all the lottery numbers. And then I'm just going to put the numbers in. And then if I come back, it's 6 p.m. They're actually going to reveal that I won. And for every day that you win, you get 50 rupees. Which, they really liked giving rupees out in this game. Guess I got a little sidetracked there for a second. So like I said, I don't think any fishing is required in this game. Um, you're welcome to do so, but I believe that this is all the um, Clock Town stuff that, or uh, just Terminus stuff that you can do for 100% completion. Um, this is the full Bomber's Notebook, aside from one quest up on the moon. Um, but next video, we'll be completing the game. So I want to thank you guys all for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. And you don't need to rewind time here, I suppose, but I did so anyways, so if you feel like it, just go for it. <laughs>